Hey guys, Josh here. Welcome to the first video of the 2021 open water season. Ice fishing is in the past. I had a great ice fishing season despite COVID and everything. Got on some fish, had some awesome uh, memories made, some cool fish that were caught. Now we're looking forward to open water. May 15th for the lower division is when it starts this year. I'm in my boat, I'm happy. It's like plus 10 on Saturday now. The wind's a little crappy, but that's, that's always uh, in my case in these videos, so. To kind of get the ball rolling for this year, I figured I'm gonna do some videos. that are gonna do some how-to tips, some of my favorite things I use for different species. Kind of share some of the things I've learned that can help you catch some more fish. So in uh, today's video, according to the title, how to fish for catfish. Manitoba is actually one of the craziest and most underrated places to fish for catfish. We're actually the catfish capital of the world. And in that, we got the Red River and the Cinnaboyne River, but I'm gonna be focusing more on the Red River. If you have never catfished before, you are missing out. It is not expensive to get into. You don't need fancy high-end rods. You don't need fancy lures, and you don't need a boat. That's probably the best thing. I rarely, rarely ever fish catfish in a boat because you can just do it offshore, catch almost just as many fish, and big fish. And before we get too far, got a brand new rod and reel here, spooled up already for catfish, and I'm gonna be giving it away at the end of this video, so stay tuned and I'm gonna tell you the steps you need to take to win this bad boy and get fishing for some catfish. So first things first, bait. Everyone's always like, oh, what kind of bait do you use for catfish? Um, and honestly, there is such a wide variety. It all depends on the year too. So we can go from tulby, gold eye, shrimp. Uh, people use like liver, stewed beef, anything that's smelly and oily, because as you know, uh, Red River, not exactly the clearest body of water, so they're going more for the scent. Um, so earlier in the year, I like to use a lot of tulipy and stuff because you can find it in some grocery stores. Um, uh, tackle shops have it too, as well as shrimp. You know, go to a superstore, 10 bucks for a bag of like 20 shrimp works just as good too. Um, but later in the year, kind of gets in like the July time when the gold eyes start to run. And I know I'm going catfishing. What I do is I'll actually plan ahead. So I'll bring a, a lighter action rod, like a six foot, six and a half foot medium, a slip bobber, a little hook with a little eight ounce jig, and then I'll use uh, worms. And I'll actually fish, catch gold eye, hopefully, before I catfish, and I'll use uh, the bait I caught right before, the gold eye. Um, it's as fresh as fresh can be, it works very well, and if you're done using it, you can bring it home, freeze it, use it for your next adventure. So, um, I don't know a lot of guys do like using like, like frogs, depending on the type of year, they'll go catch a whole bunch of frogs at the golf course or something and put those on, that works well too. Stewed beef is nice, because in the river, a lot of bullhead and stuff like to pick at your bait and they'll pull it off the hook. So what we'll do is actually we'll take uh, stewed beef, we'll put it on a pan and we'll actually sear it on each side and that way it makes it tough so when it goes on the hook, bullhead can't pry it off. So it's actually nice that way versus like sometimes you get with shrimp, you'll like see your rod going nice and small and it's like what the heck, why, why is it going, what's, it, what's happening and then you'll hook set, catch nothing over and over again because it's just bullhead that are ripping your shrimp off. So that is uh, one downside to using shrimp, but one plus side using like stewed beef or liver. I'm just gonna touch on location, where to kind of target catfish really quick. Basically anywhere on the Red River. Um, the most sought after area, the most common is at Lockport, you know, out by Selkirk. I'll show you kind of right here, right? So anywhere along the river system here, all the way down like this little brain area is well, very good. Uh, depending on the current, you can kind of fish in the floodway a bit too. Um, down by, where's the bridge? Over here, River Road, anywhere out down there. There's lots of offshore spots. There's the boat lawn trade at Sugar Island if you have a boat and you want to go in your boat. Um, but nothing too specific. I've always done really well right at Lockport. So um, if you're new there, you can catch walleye there too. If you get bored and you know, take your cat rods out, bring some walleye rods, walleye, sauger, gold eye, just about anything. So that'd be uh, your best bet to start if you're just kind of getting into catfishing or uh, want to try it out for the first time. All right, let's talk about rods now. So this one is Apple. This is a Quantum Optic 60 at the fishing hole. This is our, like our number one seller. It's an awesome combo. Retails for like 70 bucks. You get some monofilament line. It's like five, six bucks to spool up. All you want is a strong rod. You don't want to be fishing these catfish with you know a six foot medium, six and a half foot medium heavy. You can, I'm not saying you can't, but you shouldn't because there's a higher chance it's going to break, right? Every species has got its its tactics, its lures, its gear that you want to be equipped for. So for $70, you can get a rod and reel and be set for catfishing. It's awesome. Um, 
that leads me into line. So I use braided line for bass, pike, everything, except for catfish. I use monofilament, 25 pound to be exact. Uh, one other thing, you wanna stay within your rod rating. So every rod has a rating. So this one is rated uh, 15 to 30 pound test. So that's saying if you're in between 15 to 30 pounds and you get snagged or you have a whole bunch of tension on the rod, your line, if it's within that rating, will break before your rod. If you put 50 pound test on here and you get snagged and you reef in your rod, your rod is not strong enough to carry that 50 pounds. So your rod is gonna break and your line's gonna not break. So always stay within your rod ratings. But yeah, back to line. So I use monofilament for a couple of reasons. First thing, it's cheap. Uh, it's like four bucks per hundred yards if you get spooled at uh, the fishing hole, for example. Um, another thing is fishing the Red River, Assiniboine River, there's lots of rocks and such. Oh, hold on, we are overexposed. There we go, okay, back, all right. Um, Lots of rocks in the river system, right? So there's always gonna be some abrasion. So you with braided, because it's so thin, it's kind of like a fiber. When it gets rubbed up against rocks, it starts to fray and it weakens. Monofilament, way more abrasion resistant for rubbing up against rocks. It's thicker, it's stronger, it's gonna take more of a beating when it's, especially with some current, right? It's gonna be rubbing up against rocks nonstop. So that's one reason. Second reason is when you do get snagged, because that happens a lot, catfishing, um, what actually happens, because the mono stretches, braided doesn't, a couple of times you can actually see in some of my older videos, I'll reel in, keep my rod tight, and it's, it's an old trick. You kind of take the line, pull it, and then let go, and almost acts like a slingshot, because it's stretch, 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 and then when it lets go, it almost shoots the bait out, and you're free, you're scot free. And the last thing is, I actually use it to make my own cat rigs. Uh, cat rigs can be expensive if you're losing a lot, especially if you're going with a lot of people and they're like, hey, can you, can you give me a cat rig, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've started making my own, which is gonna dive into this next topic on how to make your own cat rig. All right, so some basic tools you need to make your own catfish rig. First things first, need some hooks. Hooks vary in sizes. Circle hooks are usually the way to go. It helps keep a bait on better and uh, keeps the hook pinned better in the catfish's mouth. So I use five aught, that way when I do put the bait on, uh, I find it helps stay on because it's a smaller surface area for it to come off versus if you use like a seven or a nine knot, it can slide off that hook a lot easier. You need some swivels, heavy duty ones, boom, boom. And then weights, slip through, uh, this is a, a no snag. Yeah, no snag, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. These are four ounces and then I got some three ounces as well. Now, weight can be a big factor despise this year. So 2021, our water levels are super low. The Red River is already extremely low. There was like no water in the floodway. So typically this time of year, the, the river current is going like crazy, right? So sometimes people are doubling up. They're using, you know, two, two four ounces or two three ounces to keep your weight on the bottom. This year, there's not a lot of current. We're not really gonna need to. So you should be fine with about a three ounce, even a two ounce in some situations, depending on how much current. Um, so that all depends. That's that's how you judge your weight. Current's fast, use more weights, can keep that bait down. Current's slow, use less weight, and then it's still gonna keep it down, but it doesn't have as much resistance. All right, and the last thing you need is you need some leader material, which, because we're using mono, we can just take right off the spool. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so I got about a foot and a half two feet of line there. Um, that's all I usually use to tie my rigs. Now we're gonna go uh, step by step. All right, so now I got the line run through the rod, through all the guides. So we're gonna take that foot and a half piece that we cut off, we're gonna put that to the side for now. First thing is you take your weight and through your main line, you're gonna put it through. And then you're going to connect one end of the swivel. I'm usually just using a trialing knot. So I usually put my finger through, wrap it around, four or five times, put it through your finger loop, back to the knot you just made, or the hole. And then one thing I always do, and my grandpa taught me, is I wet the line. And then that way, it slides a lot easier. It doesn't fray and doesn't have any like kinks in the line. So a uh, little trick from my grandpa. Okay, second thing, now we have that line we put aside right here we're going to connect this to the other end of that swivel so 
like so. Once again, finger through, wrap around four or five times, put that tag end through your finger hole, and then that opening hole you just made, I'm gonna loop it through, wet it, pull tight, right? Last thing, take your big bag, big, big bad hook now, and I use the same knot. So I put it through, just be careful, you're gonna poke yourself. One, two, three, four, Peter. Put it through. Wet it. Pull tight. And in Manitoba, you can't have barb hooks. So, a barb is just this little piece right here. I'm gonna take a pair of pliers. Get that right off the hop. Peter. Don't mind me, dog. So we're gonna pinch that. It's flat. Now, what happens? Yeah. Sorry, dog was barking. Back to the game plan. Yeah. So now that we're done the rig, this weight is free to go up and down your line. And because we're using mono, it's not gonna fray it. It's not gonna weaken it. When this casts out and it hits the bottom, it's gonna get stopped like a bump stop against that bottom end of the swivel. Yeah. And then your bait, so on my leg, that's the bottom. And now your bait is sitting here floating and you're good to go. Yeah. I did not cut the tag ends off, so give me two yeah. seconds. Cut. 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 This is probably one of the most underrated tools ever fishing. It's uh, can clean your eyelet. It's got a little, ah! It's got a little knife and then it cuts your line, braided, no problem. So I'd recommend definitely having one of those in your tackle box. But yeah, that is how you do your cat rig, my friends. And like I said, you have all this stuff, it's gonna save you money. You're buying it in bulk basically and making your own. So that is it. Now one thing left to do. So now that this rod and reel and rig is all ready to rock and roll, I am gonna give it away. So if you wanna win this bad boy, all you gotta do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and leave a comment on this video down below saying you wanna win this, you know, your Instagram handle, whatever it is. I'm gonna pick a winner in a week. Good luck to everyone. And uh, we're gonna do some more videos like this coming out soon, some other species. Just get ready for open water. And uh, cause I'm getting excited, I don't know about you. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you're new here once again, like and subscribe, turn on the bell notifications and we'll catch you on the next episode of Manitoba Fishing Adventures. Good luck, and we'll see you soon.